Welcome to Lesson 4, Part 1 on Desktop UI Automation with Leapwork. We've divided Lesson 4 into two parts to make it a bit more digestible. In Lesson 4, we are moving into an area which is a bit more complex than what we've seen in the previous lessons, but also way more powerful. We will look at how Leapwork actually ca captures elements and how these elements are found when the automation flow is running. We'll also look at how we can modify how elements are found and how we can capture and work with lists of elements. We will also introduce variables or tokens that we can use to store values and reuse later in a flow. We start up with something that we've seen before, which is the login block, followed by a search for the word Ben. If I run this, we will see that it returns three contact persons. The task here is to iterate through the contacts and sum up the value in the amount column, regardless of currency. At the end, we'll compare the sum to a predefined value and then pass or fail the flow based on the comparison. To get the individual roles, I'm adding a find UI element. And capture. As we can see, I can't select the entire row, but only the individual cells in the grid. This is because the capture functionality will select the highest control level or field, which is the obvious choice in most situations. This also means that the individual cells are shadowing the row element that we want to select. The way around this is just to capture one of the cells back into the block. Then we can open the strategy editor to change the actual selection by clicking on the element and select edit element. The strategy editor can look a bit overwhelming at first, but it's actually not that hard to work with once you get started. On the left, we have a list of so-called strategies, which are different ways of selecting the same unique element, which you can see here, in this case, the company name. When you capture an element, Leapwork will not only generate one strategy, but actually create a number of strategies to select from. So if we, for some reason, prefer one way of finding an element over another, it's easy to just pick the wanted strategy in this list. The strategy itself instructs the flow how it should uniquely identify the element when it's being run. The instructions can be found on the right-hand side of the strategy editor. We call these the conditions. And as we'll see later, we can not only select another strategy, but also change the conditions of a selected strategy. This is a very strong feature that makes it possible to do very complex operations in a relatively simple way. In the selected strategy, we select a cell in a grid, which we will change in a bit. But before we do this, Let's have a look at the different strategies available to select this cell. For the first strategy, we can see that we have a hierarchy in the conditions. First, we select the data grid, then we select a row in the grid, and finally, we select an element containing the text we see in the actual cell. If we select another strategy, we could take the one right at the bottom of the list, we'll see a different pattern. The data grid and the data row is still the same, but now the cell is selected by the position on the row. In this case, it's the first cell. If we click validate, the chosen strategy, including any changes to the conditions, 
will be executed on the already open application and we'll see a red rectangle highlighting the element that matches the conditions in the strategy. If we change the child number to the value 2 and click validate, we'll see that the second column is highlighted. We can also delete elements from the hierarchy to change what element is selected. So if we delete the column part and the lowest level that just takes the text part of the column and click validate, we can now see that the entire row is selected. So because that we want to iterate the contact persons one row at a time, this might be a good strategy. What we now have is a strategy that selects only one row, but somehow we wanted to save the all the rows in the search result. If we examine the conditions a bit further, we can say that it says child. And then the value one. This is the line telling the flow to just select the first row. If we change the child number to just child, it means that now all rows will be selected. When I click validate now, you can see that it says that it's now found one of three. This means the strategy matched three rows. If we click the arrow to the right, we can now see row two being selected and so forth for row three. This tells me that the strategy is now correct. It will select all the rows as a list of rows that I can use inside my automation flows. When I click Save and return to Leap Work, the block will now use the selected and modified strategy and return a list of rows. And as with all lists of data in Leap Work, it's easy to turn the building block handling the list into a looping block. We just select all occurrences, which means that the top connector is now triggered for each element in the list, in this case, each contact person. The found element property will now contain the current selected row when all the rows are looped. To read the amount field, we attach a get UI number to the found element property. And we can see that it's now connected to the source property. This means that the get UI number block will now only operate on the row and not the entire application. We capture the amount field from one of the rows. And then we just have to make a slight change to the strategy to read the number. The first strategy is based on the actual number in the amount field that we captured. We wanted to be able to read the amount field for any row, so we'll change to a strategy that's not based on the actual value in the amount field, but selecting the field based on other conditions. When we captured the amount field, it was captured in the scope of the entire application. This means that the conditions in the strategy contains the data grid and a reference to the row we captured from, here and here. Because we already have limited the scope to one single row by connecting the found element to the source property previously, we don't need the reference to the grid and the row and we can delete both of these references. Now I'll just connect the find UI element and the get UI number blocks to make sure that they are included in the flow. To calculate the total amount, we need to store the sum of the amount from the individual rows. 
and update this as a part of iterating the contact persons. To do this, we add a set variable. After we fetched the amount value from a row. This block is used for creating variables or tokens that can be accessed during the flow. We will name this total amount and we would like to set the value to whatever value we have already stored in the variable total amount plus the value we just got from the current row. To do this, we add a calculate block from the logic category to the number found. We then connect a get variable block to the value B property to read what value is already stored in the total amount variable. The calculation method is per default set to A plus B, which means that the calculated block will return the sum of the two inputs. We then connect the result number to the value property on the set variable. So to summarize, we use a find UI element block to find and loop all the contact persons. For each contact person, we read the amount field and add this to a variable named total amount. The last part of the test flow is to verify that the calculated total amount is higher than a predefined value and pass or fail the test flow based on this. Once all the contact persons has been iterated, the completed connector is now triggered and we can continue the flow from this connector. We add a compare block and again use get variable to read the total amount. In this thought of example, we want to make sure that the total amount is greater than 40,000. So I specify 40,000 in the value B field and select greater than as the comparison method. If the total amount is greater than 40,000, then the compare statement is correct and we will pass the flow. If not, the flow will fail. Let's run the entire flow. And the flow passed. We can see in the log values how the values from the individual rows are added to the total amount and that the value is used in the final compare. In this video, we looked into how LeapWork captures and finds the individual elements when the flow is run. We looked at the strategy editor and saw how we can select between different strategies and how we can modify the conditions between the strategies to select lists of elements. Using a modified strategy, we collected data from a list of contact persons and used the set and get variable to store data while the flow was running. This ends lesson four, part one.